Now, the opposition assistant treasurer, Matthias Cormann, joins us now from Sydney. Matthias Cormann, good morning and thank you for making time. Good morning. Your figures are out today. Do you have any sense of unease or even guilt that, that two days is just not enough time for the Australian people to properly digest these figures before they vote? Uh, not at all. We've gone through a proper methodical structured process. Every time we've released uh, policy, we've released uh, transparently the information about the cost of that policy. Uh, we've of course released the bulk of our uh, savings uh, measures, $31.6 billion worth of savings uh, last week. Uh, and, and of course, I mean, you can only release the full tally of all of your policy costings after you've released all of your policies and we've done that now and, and that is why today uh, we'll release uh, the full detailed uh, policy costing which will show that under the coalition uh, the budget will be better off uh, to the tune of uh, more than six billion dollars over the forward estimates and that will be uh, reducing uh, debt by about 16 billion dollars over the forward estimates. According uh, to reports about today, your return to surplus would not be any sooner than Labor's projection of a $4.3 billion surplus in around 2016-17. Is that right? Well, when it comes to the question of return to surplus, it really depends on the starting position that we'll inherit. And you've got to remember that in the 11 weeks uh, from the budget in May to the economic statement in August, uh, the budget position deteriorated by $33 billion, or uh, the, the, the deficit increased by about $3 billion a week. Uh, so who knows what the budget position is going to be that we'll inherit from Labor if we are successful uh, on Saturday. But what we can say is that as, as a result of our savings, our carefully targeted uh, savings measures, uh, the budget bottom line will be better off uh, by uh, more than six billion dollars over the forward estimates. And may I just say, uh, Labor always promises surplus budgets before the election only to deliver deficit budgets after the election. We're being entirely open and transparent and realistic uh, about what we uh, can do. And may I just say that we'll uh, deliver a reliable surplus uh, quick, more quickly uh, than the Labor Party. Yeah, oh, oh, well, more quickly than the Labor Party. So then, so then you will return to surplus before that 2016-17 that, that figure then? Uh, you can't trust what Labor says about uh, budget projections before an election. I mean, if you well, look no, at what but, they but say... Well, no, but Matthias Cormann, you, you can be confident about where you start at the moment because we know that the economy's real growth in the June quarter was almost exactly what the Reserve Bank predicted. Uh, and, and same with the nominal GDP. So, so you, you, your starting point won't come as any surprise. So it's not, it's not exactly true to say, is it, that you won't know where you'll start? Well, look at what Labor said in the lead-up to the last election. They promised a $3.1 billion uh, surplus for 2012-13. We now have a 19.4 no, billion This is not about Labor surplus. This, this, this surplus. This is about where the economy starts now, according to official figures. Well, again, and, and for 2013-14, Labor in the, uh, 2010 said that we would have a $4.8 billion surplus, and we now have a $30.1 billion deficit. So, I mean, Labor has made a mess of the budget. You can't ever trust uh, what they say about what would happen after an election because Labor will just spend more. There will be more waste under Labor. Under the coalition, uh, we'll cut the waste. Uh, we'll live within our means. Uh, you can, people can be confident that when we make uh, predictions around uh, what will happen moving forward, that we will deliver on them. And um, according to what appear to be some strategic leaks today, your figures won't be an alternative budget or show a path to surplus. They'll just be an aggregate cost of, of promises and savings. So I just wonder what's going to be so persuasive about that for Australian voters? Well, what, what it will show is uh, over the forward estimates on a year-by-year -year basis, uh, the cost of all of our policies, and it will show on a year-to-year -year basis over the forward estimates, uh, the value of our savings. And of course, uh, we've gone through the most rigorous process any opposition has ever gone through, uh, through the Parliamentary Budget Office. We have a, a committee of experts with uh, the former head of the Prime Minister's Department, Peter Shergold, with uh, Jeff Carmody, a former senior Treasury official, and Len Scanlon, a former Auditor General in Queensland, signing off on the integrity of the process that we followed, signing off uh, on our costings. So people can have full confidence that the figures that we're putting forward today, uh, that Joe Hockey and Andrew Robb will release later today, uh, are credible. Matthias Cormann, given you need to get legislative changes through a potentially hostile Senate in order to make your savings, aren't a great deal of these figures out today then just speculative? Uh, not at all. I mean, every budget uh, that the government puts forward uh, requires legislation to implement it. I mean, I think that you're speculating about what 
the uh, Labour Party might do uh, after the election on the basis of what they say before the election. Let me just say. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a fair assumption. They, they say that they, they wouldn't support you in, uh, in getting rid of the price on carbon. So if they're saying that, then that's, pa that's, that's well, the hostility you might be facing. P past history shows that it is not a fair assumption to believe that what Labour says before an election is what they do after the election. So with a softening economy, it's fair to project, isn't it, that a surplus is going to be a fair way off for a coalition government? Well, let me just say that we've got uh, a plan for a stronger, more prosperous economy uh, and for more jobs. And if you just look at, uh, for example, our proposal to scrap uh, the carbon tax, the Parliamentary Budget Office has uh, indicated to us uh, that that will deliver a growth dividend in terms of additional revenue for government of about $1.1 billion over the forward estimates. Now, we haven't taken that into account in terms of determining the, bu uh, the budget bottom line impact uh, of, our, of our policies and, and savings measures. However, uh, it just shows you uh, a very uh, tangible outcome uh, of uh, coalition policy to grow the economy more strongly. And uh, Matthias Cormann, just to get a sense of the, um, the financial mind, if you like, of, of Matthias Cormann, the Assistant, assistant uh, uh, Finance Treasurer, Finance Minister. As, uh, as Assistant Finance Minister working then uh, with the Finance Minister and the Treasurer, are you more in the Peter Costello camp of financial rectitude or, or more in the John Howard camp of return the money to the people kind of guy? Which way do you go? Uh, I, I'm part of a team uh, and uh, I'm part of the coalition team and our commitment is uh, to, as a government to live within our means, uh, to spend less so we can tax less, to grow the economy more strongly and to create more jobs. Uh, obviously uh, this is a uh, team effort and Joe Hockey and Andrew Robb are providing the leadership uh, to our economic team and I'm, I'm one part of that team. I, I, I understand that, I'm just trying to get a sense of, of your personal philosophy. Well, uh, I'm part of a team and uh, this doesn't come down to personal philosophy. All of us in the coalition share a commitment uh, to bring the budget uh, back into surplus in a credible and believable way as soon as possible uh, and more quickly than the Labour Party would uh, and to uh, implement our plan should we be successful on Saturday uh, to build a stronger, more prosperous economy. Thank you for making time today. Always good to be here.